author of Tale of Despero about uh, reading being presented as a gift. And that's obviously what we're trying to do here uh, with our playlist. Uh, we've talked now about a game, an activity that we can use uh, with our kids around teaching them letter names, being able to identify them, uh, also their sounds, both for capital and lowercase letters, okay? And once we feel as though uh, our students are doing that pretty uh, consistently, we want to look forward to our next task, right? And that's going to involve blending. And Kelly's going to speak to uh, how we can use those same letter cards and start to have our students blending those sounds together and, and reading words. Before we get there though, uh, I, I wanna introduce a method of instruction that I think is going to help you practice some of these activities that Kelly and I are going to uh, introduce to you in just a moment. Now, I know we said we were going to keep this uh, fun as, as least structured as possible, and that's true. But I also think we wanna make sure that what we're doing is actually effective and is going to make a difference for, uh, for our kids. So it's important to use something, right, that our students might also see in the classroom, might see their teachers using, um, and ultimately that's going to work. So of course, I want to introduce to you the gradual release model of responsibility or the gradual release model of instruction. And this was actually originally developed for reading instruction, okay? And of course, when we say gradual release model, we're talking about the I do, right? As the, the, the teacher, the instructor, then it's a we do. So whatever I've just introduced, I'm going to do it with my son, my daughter, alongside of them to kind of scaffold model again, okay? And then I'm going to present them the opportunity where I'm still there to lend assistance if need be, right? But we're, we're gradually uh, passing off or transitioning um, the responsibility or the task at hand from us to them, okay? So this is going to be a helpful routine to help us to be effective um, regardless of, of the reading skill that we are um, hoping to teach to our students. Okay, now that being said, I'd like to reintroduce Kelly Joseph, uh, where we're going to pick up our interview where we left off from last week. So glad you're back, everyone. I know you talked a little bit about letter names and sounds, and, and we often say that's like the what, right? We're teaching them those names and the sounds. And I, I do believe you hinted at this a little bit, but the next step in teaching them the how, how to read with those uh, letter names and sounds, or maybe even as they're starting to, to take a crack at reading independently and they come to words maybe they don't know, what are some ways that we can support um, or, or guide our, our children as they're, as they're reading at home and they're in this stage? Yeah, I think so. Once our students are, are ready to try it out on their own, right? We're continuing to read aloud to them. We're being that model. Um, but once our students um, have had the chance to sort of play with sounds and do that kind of how we I mentioned earlier, phonological or phonemic awareness, once they know their letter names and sounds and they're starting to be ready to kind of put those pieces together and try it out, I think there's some different ways that we can gamify kind of that experience with helping students to learn to blend also. Um, and so that they're getting an opportunity to begin to practice blending some words. So by finding some very basic, simple text, if you have a local library that you can access, you can order some books online, um, but you're able to find um, kind of low, what we call readability levels. So very basic, very simple text, maybe one line of text per page, heavy picture support, um, those tend to be really good beginner readers for students. But even by going back to things like your handy dandy set of cards that we've already made, right? Um, you're able to use these to even support your students. So what you can do is start with just very basic, um, easily decodable, meaning that the letters, you're able to sound them out, the letters behave. Um, we know in, in the English language, the letters don't always behave themselves in every word, right? 
Um, many words are decodable uh, and they can be sounded out. There are some words that cannot be sounded out um, and those are called sight words, more on sight words in a little bit. But if you're able to um, kind of pull together a couple of quick letters, so an example could be um, a, an easy basic word like um, the word at, for example. You know, we're able to kind of put these two letter cards sort of side by side like this, and we can model for our students by doing things like touching the letters one at a time, even sliding the cards up and down. We can show them and we can say, so A says ah, right? Ah, T says t, right? So let's see what happens if we put those sounds together. At, at, at. Oh, we get the word at. Oh, great. Okay, so what happens if we then, let's try it out. If we, let's add a letter. Let's try to put the letter B in front of it. What happens then? Let's see if we can say these sounds together. B, at, b, at, bat. And we can get them starting to see how now these letter sounds that they know can be put together and they're able to see those symbols to begin to actually create words. So using, again, just your letter cards that you were playing Go Fish or Memory with um, to, to solidify those letter names and sounds, you can now sort of repurpose and use them um, to, to do some word building games. And as your children advance, you can even like lay out the cards yourself and you can give a word and see if they can build it. So once they're ready kind of for the next step, um, you can say, ooh, okay, so right now it says bat. Um, I wonder what would happen if you changed the middle letter to um, make it be a word that shows that I, I took a bite out of something. What would it be? And see if they could, they could change it to the word, you know, bit. Maybe they find their eye um, and then they, they put the eye in the middle. Oh, I bit the apple and see if they're able to then build that word and practice reading it. Um, you know, run their fingers underneath it and so on. So you could do that um, once your students are even ready for things like long vowels. Um, you know, when, um, it, and I explain this to my my students as the letters that um, they they say their their name versus the, their, their short sound. So, you know, the magic E is the first kind of long vowel pattern we do. So that, that E, um, I always explain this as E is a very strong letter because it will tell the other vowel to say its name. So now instead of bit, now the I has to say its name and its name is I. So what does this word become now? It becomes bite, right? And you can kind of start to see how you can sort of build up as your children progress with their knowledge of letter names, with their understanding of blending, um, and, and start to, to model some of those patterns for students. You can even begin to do things like beginning blends, like you can put ST together in the beginning, or FL, or GR in the beginning, so it's not just one letter before the vowel. So you can kind of increase the complexity as your, as your children show that they're ready for more. And another thing that is also kind of a fun just game to play, um, if you have a game at home already, <clears throat> like say Scrabble or something that has letters on like tiles, um, something along those lines. My own child has a game called Bananagrams. If you're familiar, they're like little tiles, letter tiles. But you, the idea is that you kind of almost make your own crossword puzzle. Um, so a fun game could be when you feel like your child is ready for it, maybe um, as the, the, the parent, you, you build a word first and you read it, then see if your child can read it and then build another word off of that one. And sure. then they have to read the first word and the second word. Then you build a third word, you read the first word, the second word, the third, they add a word and then go back and reread. So you, that can also um, not only support their decoding skills, but their fluency skills because they're constantly going back and they're rereading those words that they've already built. Um, and so on. So I think there's a lot of really great fun games that you can kind of pull in with simple, simple tools and things that, you know, don't require a lot of equipment, um, but are still fun and engaging for, for young kids. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the HMH International Content Cares YouTube channel. If you're looking for more content, click on the video to the right of your screen. Welcome to our global community.